Hi and welcome to Reaper TV. In part two of our series on building your home recording studio for free, we're going to be concentrating on the bass guitar. We're going to take a look at some pedals we can use, we're going to take a look at some amp simulators, and we're going to take a look at some cab emulation with impulse responses. So let's take a look at all that now. So if you missed part one of the series, the link will be in the description below and also pop up in the right hand corner right now that'll take you straight through to that video which I'd recommend taking a look at because it's going to give you a great overview of all the things we're going to cover as well as some basic information on the different tools and software that I'd recommend to start off with. But if you've seen that or you just want to crack on with the bass guitar side of things, let's move on and take a look at what we've got available to us. So what I've got in front of me right now is I've got a bass track that's recorded through DI, so there's nothing influencing this sound. It's straight from the bass, straight through my interface, and straight into my digital audio workstation. So what we're going to take a look at doing is we're going to add in an amplifier. We're going to take a look at applying some impulse responses that are geared towards bass cabs. And we're then going to take a look at some pedals that will allow you to create even more depth and breadth to the sound you want to get from your bass guitar. So the first thing I'm going to do is come down and actually start applying some effects to our, our bass track. So I'm going to come to my effects browser. And the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to use the Ignite amps and we're going to use the SHB1. Now this is geared towards bass. The link is in the description below. And this is a great start. And it's not the only one that's available to you, but it's one I'm going to take a look at today. So all we need to do is just drag that up, drop it onto our track, and that'll load up the instance of the Ignite amps bass amplifier. So I'll just turn that off a second and we'll listen to the, the clean DI track so you can see exactly what we're starting out with. So there's no EQ on this, there's nothing like delay or anything. This is just straight out of the, the, uh, the bass guitar, straight through our interface. So we're not going to worry about EQ outside the amplifier. We'll take a look at that in future videos when we look at different EQ software that we can use. But for now, let's just take a look at some of the kind of sounds we can we can get from this free software. So if I switch the amplifier on, I'm going to leave all the settings as they are, the default, and we'll just take a, a quick listen to the difference in, in the actual audio. So you can see it's already a lot more punchy. And obviously we can control the, the normal amp EQ through this section. We can adjust the gain. We've got some controls to allow us to shape the sound so we can adjust, increase the, the depth on there to give it a bit more low end. We can increase the top end by using the bright switch. We can switch it through mono and stereo. We can even flip over to the back of the amplifier and we can tweak some additional information such as the input and output levels and the oversampling levels that we're going to use. So let's just switch front back over to the front end. And... Okay, we've got our start. Actually, we can tweak this to get it exactly where you want, so you can adjust the gain and the bass in your, your normal section, uh, your audio. But what we're going to do is the second stage of this, because at the moment we're just hearing the amplifier affecting the sound, and it's not really giving us a true representation of what the bass guitar would sound like if it's coming out of a speaker cabinet. So the next thing we're going to do is take a look at a impulse response loader that allows us to control what cabs and things that we're going to use to influence the sound that we've got available to us. So in this example, I'm not going to use the Mercurial Cab Loader we used in the first video. We're going to take a look at the Ignite Amps Nadir. So if I just open that up, we just drag that up onto our track, close that down, and bring in the actual impulse loader. You can see this one differs ever so slightly from the previous one. This allows us to run two cabs simultaneously. We can adjust the delay between the two cabs. We can even EQ the cabs themselves so we can add in a high pass or low pass filter. We can mix. We can adjust the levels. We can run things through mono, dual mono or stereo. We can adjust the quality. So there's quite a lot of option available to us before we even start to go in and worry about EQing on the track itself. So this is a great, uh, a great impulse response loader. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to load in an impulse response that I've got on my system. So I just browse for it and I'm going to use this one. I've got a couple of bass cabs on you. I've got one that's emulating an Ampeg SVT810, a VL1002, and an Eden 4 4x10. So I'm going to just go with the, the Ampeg 810, and I'm just going to choose one of these. I'm not too worried about which one I'm going to use because it's just for demonstration. 
So we'll open that up. Now that's loaded in the actual impulse response for that cabinet. So now we're running the head through the cabinet. The only thing we need to do is make sure that we've got these in the right order. So all I'm going to do is come over to my effects panel and just make sure that I've got the amplifier before the speaker cabinet. If you've got the opposite way around, I'd recommend you adjust those accordingly. Otherwise, you're going to get a bit of a strange sound. So let's take a listen now. I'll turn off the power to the, the impulse responses and we'll listen to it and we'll AB it between the two. So as you can tell, there's a considerable difference there. Now, our bass tone has been affected as if we were playing through an 8x10, sorry, a 10-inch speaker cabinet. Um, so we're running our head through our speaker cabinet, and we get a more realistic bass tone now as opposed to the DI signal or the amp and the DI signal, which had no speakers influencing the tone. Now, if I want to, I can easily just come in and choose a different amp tone, or sorry, a different speaker tone. So we'll just try a different one. Let's try the first one there. We'll open that up. And we'll see how that differs. So again, we've got a different tone in there by using different impulse responses. With this particular impulse response loader, we can actually run this in stereo. So we can run two separate cams or we can run dual mono. So we can have two completely different cab emulations. So if we're mixing two different cabs, then we can emulate that with this just by simply loading in a second cab. So what we'll just do is click and browse. And for this example, we'll just choose the Eden 4x10 and we'll just choose that one. So now if I just set the balance on there, we'll set it to centered. So now we're running two different speaker cab emulations. So we're going through the Ignite amp, through the two speaker cabs, and that's what's giving us our sound. So let's have a listen to that. So you can see by mixing and matching different impulse responses, we can actually warm the tone up. We can change the tone considerably. And this is a great way of getting excellent bass tones without having to set up an entire rig in a room and then start running microphones and everything through to it. And the best thing, they're all completely free. So you can see we can adjust the route in. So we can come down to this and say run dual mono. So let's have a listen. So you can see by using two impulse responses, you can run it in stereo if you want to. Uh, obviously, that's going to work better with the guitars because you generally want to keep your bass down the middle, but there's no rules. We can break anything we want. So it's going to give you a good scope for creating some great tones, but we can go one step further with it. Actually, two steps further. So let's take a look at those extra steps right now. So this all sounds pretty good, but how about we start adding in some effects pedals? Let's give it a little bit of drive, a little bit of overdrive, and maybe tighten things up with a tube screamer. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over to Nick Crow Labs, and so it's on like TSE. And what we're going to do is we're going to put the BOD overdrive, and we're also going to use the TSE 808 to tighten things up, just give it a little bit more snap. Now, like I say, these are all purely optional and might not be the sound you're looking for. But, you know, experiment with different tones, different effects and things just to get the kind of sound that you might not be looking for, but it might open up a whole new range of sounds through just some simple adding in some effects and adjusting and tweaking things. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take up, first of all, we'll do the overdrive. We'll drop that up onto the track. We'll just make sure that's in the right position. So we've got that amplifier, speaker emulation, and then we've got the overdrive, so that's fine. So now... We could just overdrive the amplifier and give it a little bit of distortion. So let's just hit play and then we'll AB with and without the uh, the bass overdrive. So 
So you can see we can really push the overdrive on there and give it a nice distorted sound. That sounds great if you kind of mix the two, the clean, clicky sort of uh, spanky kind of amp sound, and then you add in the overdrive together, mix those two together, and you can get a really nice full bass tone, especially when you then start EQ in the low end and mixing those two frequencies. You can also use the blend on the TSE bass overdrive, so you can blend the clean signal with the distorted signal if you want, and you want to keep one track. You know, and you can adjust the EQ, you've got the drive, you can adjust the quality on there. It's a great bass overdrive. So the second one we're going to take a look at is just adding in the TSE-808, which is effectively like an Ibanez Tube Screamer. But what it does is it kind of just tightens the whole tone of the bass up. So let's just take that up and we'll drop that onto the track. And we'll bring that over. Now I'm going to put that in the sequence before the actual bass overdrive. So I want that to be the first right on the line into the amplifier. So let's just try that. We'll turn off the bass overdrive and we'll just use the tube screamer on its own a second. So exactly the same as before, we'll just do this. We'll A, B it, we'll switch it on and off so you can hear the difference. So this is with it on. So as you can see, we've got a whole range of options, all of them completely free, but you can get some great tones out of this. Now, obviously, this video is just showing you some of the things that you can do and giving you the tools to actually create with. What you do with them and the kind of sound that you're looking for is kind of comes down to you. I'm not a bass player by any stretch of the imagination. So hopefully what this has done is it's given you a good overview of the free software that's available to you so you can take a bass guitar through a direct input and then you can run it through an amp simulator. You can run it through one or two cab impulse responses. You can add a bass overdrive in there. You can add a tube screen if you want to tighten things up. You can then mix multiple different tracks together to get a great sounding mix with your bass guitar. Well, I hope you found this video useful. If you have, please hit the subscribe button below to be kept up to date with all of the content we add every single Friday. If you have any comments, questions, or feedback on this video or anything else on the channel, please pop those in the comment section below. We'll read everything you post and try to answer every question asked. If you want more exclusive free content, please visit www.reapertv.co.uk where we've got exclusive content not available anywhere else. And as I said before, all applicable links are in the description below should you need to check any of these out. Well, until next time, happy mixing.